สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So this looks very much like Pad Thai, right? But it is not. It is a cousin of Pad Thai called Sen Jan Pad Bu. And in Thailand, we actually have a few dishes that I would call Pad Thai adjacent, meaning they are different, but kind of have a similar vibe. So the most famous of these cousins is probably this one. It's got fewer ingredients than pad thai. It's heavier on the chilies, but it's got the same sweet, salty, sour flavor profile that we all love. So today, let's go on a little food adventure together and make this off the beaten path dish. We'll talk a little bit about its origins, and if you want to cook it at home, lucky for you, it is also much simpler than pad thai. Let's get started. We're gonna start with the thing that sets this dish apart from pad thai, and that is the chili paste. I've got some dry chilies here, a few spicy ones, and one mild one, which together will give me a medium heat level. You can, of course, adjust this ratio to taste. I'm gonna remove the seeds by simply cutting them with scissors and just pouring the seeds out. Removing the seeds will help tone down the heat and help them grind more easily as well. But there's no need to remove every last one. I'm going to grind the chilies in a coffee grinder. If you don't have a grinder, you can do it in a mortar and pestle, and I'll put more details on that on the blog. Next, I have some garlic, which I'm going to pound into a paste, and then in go some chopped shallots and the ground dried chilies, and everything gets pounded down into a rough paste. It does not have to be smooth, but you do want to smash and bruise all the shallots to release all the flavor. For the seasonings, it is the same as pad thai. We have palm sugar for sweet, fish sauce for salty, and tamarind paste for sour. And I have more info on all these ingredients on the blog post linked below. Now I'm going to combine the fish sauce, tamarind, and water, but leaving out the sugar. Now let's talk noodles. This dish, as I said, is called sen jan pad bo. Sen means noodles. Jan is short for jan taburi, which is the province in Thailand that is famous for making great rice noodles with a chewy texture that's perfect for stir fries. So this dish is actually their local specialty because it features their famous product. Not just the noodles, but also seafood, which is typically used in this dish because jan taburi is a coastal city. Now the rest of the name pad. Means to stir fry with crab, and crab is the most common protein used for this dish. But you can also make it with shrimp, which is much more accessible and affordable. Today I'm going to use both, just so you know how to work with both. But you can choose one or the other. And today I am using rice noodles from Pine Brand, who is our old friend and sponsor for this episode. If you've been following the show, you know that I'm a big fan of their glass noodles, and they have just come out with rice noodles. These are brand new. I'm very excited about it. In addition to rice, they also add some tapioca starch to the noodles, and that will give them that extra satisfying chewiness. It makes a difference to the texture. And not only that, it also prevents you from overcooking them so easily. If you are using another brand of rice noodles, just make sure to get the right size. The size you're going for for Sen Jan Pad Bu is three millimeters wide, and for my American friends, that is about an eighth of an inch. All right, and here is how you prep the noodles. Soak the noodles in room temperature water for anywhere between 30 minutes to one hour. The time depends on the brand and the temperature of your water. So to check, lift them up from the water, and if they're completely limp, not resisting gravity at all, not holding on to their original shape, they are ready. There are some shortcuts you can take, and I'll write them up on the blog. For protein, as I said, I'm going to do both shrimp and crab, but you can choose one or the other. Finally, you just need some veggies, which are bean sprouts. Garlic chives and cucumber, and that is it. All right, this goes pretty quickly, and actually, unlike pad thai, this is a very weeknight friendly dish. I've made this like on a Tuesday, Wednesday after work, and it's way simpler than the fully loaded pad thai. So I've got some oil in my pan here, and then in goes our chili paste. And I'm going to sauté this to cook the herbs and infuse the oil with all of those great flavors. And the ground chilies are going to give Sen Jan Pad Bu its iconic orange color. It should be bright orange. However, if you see bright orange Pad Thai in North America, 
that is not sentan patbu, okay? I can assure you that. That is probably just paprika or ketchup that restaurants like to add to make their pad thai look more colorful. Neither ketchup nor paprika belongs in pad thai, by the way. So I'm going to keep the heat relatively low for now because I don't want to burn the paste. It's very hard to tell if I've burned the garlic because it's all red now, right? So, okay, that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to go in with my palm sugar and give that some time to dissolve. Okay. It doesn't have to be completely dissolved, just mostly. And then in goes my tamarind, fish sauce, and water mixture. Now, if you recall, in my Pad Thai video, I actually make the sauce separately. You can also do that with this. Just make it advanced, keep it in the fridge, it's ready to go when you are. But I also wanted to show you how you can just make it straight in one go in the wok. Okay, now it gets good. I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit. And then I'm gonna cook my shrimp in this sauce. Mm. And this will infuse the sauce with shrimp flavor and infuse the shrimp with sauce flavor. It's just a very happy flavor exchange that's happening here. In Thailand, when they use crab, sometimes they leave the shell on the crab and just cut the crab into chunks. And then the crab shell infuses so much great flavor into the sauce. And I'm just gonna cook the shrimp for like a minute just until they're fully cooked. Okay, that looks good. The shrimp are done. I'm gonna just turn the heat off for now just so I can take my time removing the shrimp, but you wanna leave all the sauce behind. Now it is super easy. I'm gonna turn the heat back on, medium high at this point, throw all the noodles in, and then all you have to do is let it cook until the noodles are done. The only trick here is that every brand of noodles are going to end up absorbing a different amount of sauce and also how much liquid you've got left in the pan, how high your heat is, there are many, many factors. So what you will have to do is once your sauce dries up, taste the noodles and if it's still too chewy, too undercooked, Add a splash of water and keep going until the noodles are done. So you want to have a thing of water handy. Be ready for that. And in my experience, usually I have to add an extra splash to here. And then once you've done it a few times, you, you can adjust your initial amount of water accordingly. Mmm, look at that. Look at that color! Oh my god, that looks like American takeout pad thai. <laughs> but it is not. Okay, it's mostly dry. I'm going to off the heat for now, just to check the noodle texture. Mmm! That's very close. I'm just going to do just a teeny tiny bit more. I think I soak these a little bit longer than I normally do, so I don't need as much water. See, that's another thing. How long you soak your noodles will have an impact on how much water you need to add in the wok. So do not just blindly follow a recipe. You got to use your judgment. It's a lot to ask, I know, but that is the way it is. Okay. All right, now it's ready. Go back in with the shrimp, with the crab, because the crab is cooked, so we don't need to cook it anymore. I'm not adding all my crab though. And then the veggies, the bean sprouts and the garlic chive, and then give everything a toss. And then I'm gonna off heat now because the noodles are done. And that's it. Oh my God, that looks so good. It looks so good. Looks so good. I'm going to top with more crab because this is expensive stuff. You don't want to like hide it all inside the noodles, right? You just want to show it off. If you're on a budget, just put it all on top so it looks like <laughs> there's more crab than there actually is. Oh my God, look at that. Now, compared to Pad Thai, 
this is a lot more noodle heavy. It's, it's heavier on the noodles, lighter on the vegetables. There's no eggs, peanuts, tofu, all those bits that are normally there to lighten pad thai is not here, which is why you have to serve it with extra vegetables on the side that will really lighten it up, extra bean sprouts. And also that explains the cucumber, which is not no normally served with pad thai, but I feel like with this, like you really need the cucumber to, to lighten and freshen it up. A few extra garlic chives on the side. You know, they always put these on the side of Pad Thai and Sinjan Pad Thu. I never eat it. <laughs> but you have to have it, otherwise it doesn't look complete. A wedge of lime. You may or may not need it. It depends on the acidity of your tamarind. If your tamarind is quite sour, I find sometimes you don't need it. But you know, sometimes it could use a little extra zing. So that is there. Look how beautiful that is! All right, let's taste it. Mm. I gotta have some crab. So good. I love this with cucumber. Because again, like this is a much heavier dish. And the cucumber really adds the crunch, the freshness, makes a big difference. Now, as I said, this is a much simpler dish than pad thai. It has like half the ingredients. So the flavor is less complex than a fully loaded pad thai. However, it is still really good. It's got the perfect balance of sweet, salty, sour. The noodles are nice and chewy. Like the flavor of the crab and the shrimp really went into the noodles. Like this tastes seafoody to me. You know, if you love pad thai, making a fully loaded pad thai on a weeknight is not the most practical thing. But this, I can make it from scratch, no problem. So it's, it's definitely an option that's very, very practical. And I really encourage uh, you to give it a try because I would love for people to know more about the different variations of popular dishes. Everyone knows pad thai, like I don't need to go on about that. But there are so many more similar dishes that are hidden gems of Thailand that I would love for more people to know about. And that's it. The recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com. A special thanks to all of our Patreon members who help support the show. And if you want to know what that's all about, how you can get bonus recipes and get direct access to me, you can check that out in the link below. Thank you, as always, for watching, and I will see you next time. Sawadee